Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new 2021 Lego Ninjago Legacy set that's going to be set number 71738 Zane's Titan Mech Battle a remake of a season 5 Lego set with 840 pieces this four minifigure set retailed for $59.99 USD or $60 and I think that price is relatively fair, but the lack of minifigures here is shocking, especially considering the scene that this set was based on. I actually am currently re-watching the Ninjago TV show, and I just watched this episode, like the episode that this set was in, about 20 minutes ago before I decided to film this, so I will actually know what I'm talking about for this review, and I'm very, very excited about that. This set looks fantastic. The box is really great. I love the ghosts that are included, and the dynamic pose of the mech and everything with the mountain on the back looks so, so cool. The box is really well designed. I do, I do appreciate that. And then here's a better look at the back of the box. We got some very interesting symbols on the side there. Not sure what they mean. Play features on the bottom and then the golden ninja wheel along with some clips from the actual TV show right there. And then a dynamic pose of the mech. Looks really, really cool. But enough about the box. Let's move on to the manual and then the build of the set. The instruction manual for this set is one of the large bound copies. It looks really good. Very, very sturdy. On the back, we have Lloyd as per usual. The parts list and then an advertisement for the other legacy sets of the wave, all of which I will have now. And you'll be seeing a review of the Tournament of Elements set really, really soon. That's all for that manual, though. All right, and here's the set all built up, and it looks fantastic. I love that model. We're going to take a look at all the characters first, however, and then we're going to take a look at the actual build. All right, our first minifigure is going to be the 10 Years of Ninjago Golden Legacy J figure based on his Prime Empire appearance. I think I would have preferred maybe a Skybound uh, Legacy figure because Prime Empire seems way too recent to do a Legacy figure for. But that's okay, I guess. I mean, I don't really have any problems with it. I love the design here. We got a really nice 10 Years of Ninjago print. Uh, pr that's a print right there. And on this little display stand that all the other ninja do share. Taking that away, though, we get a look at just the minifigure as a whole. His uh, equipment is two uh, gold katanas. And he's got that traditional Prime Empire piece on his back. Although there's no post or anything with the health bar, which I do appreciate. I feel like that would have been very unnecessary his helmet is done in gold with a very nice blue uh, rim and everything and he's got the traditional j face and everything for the lego ninjago movie pulling all his armor off you can get a much better look at his printing and everything let's get his helmet off there too and you can see he's got the very nice gold robes with some lightning designs and everything with some blue underneath and a very nice belt design as well his legs are i believe identical to all the other ninja in their golden attire He's got some very nice designs on the back, which is completely covered up by his armor normally. That gives you a better look at both of his facial expressions. A really good minifigure. Definitely my favorite of the Golden Ninja. Definitely way better than the Lloyd minifigure we'll take a look at later. And definitely just such a cool thing. I love these Golden Ninja. And honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought in this set if it wasn't for the fact that this minifigure was included. So LEGO really did, uh, did a good thing by uh, spreading all these characters out because it's going to make a lot of people buy a lot of sets. Our next character is going to be Zane. His, I believe it's called Deep Stone Armor. It's the stone from the bottom of the ocean that prevents him from ghost possession. And that's really, really cool because this was a huge part of this season. My biggest problem with the character is the armor piece he uses should have two flaps, one on each shoulder, as opposed to just one. I understand why they did that to attach the sword to his back, which is faithful to this season. However, I wish there was a new piece that had, you know, two shoulder pads as opposed to just one. His accessories are a bow and arrow, which I don't get because he only ever used that in the Ninjago movies. And while I understand why they included it and everything, I would have preferred a more show accurate accessory. He's also got a katana on the back, but we can pull both of those away. That gives you a better look at his printing. He's got some very nice white belt designs there, along with the uh, circular symbol in the center of his chest with some white robes on top of the black uh, black base design. Uh, some very nice gum metal gray and everything. Pulling off his ninja wrap, which is the traditional uh, black and white head wrap. You can see he's got his titanium face angry on this side. And then there's no back uh, facial printing, just the back of the head print and everything and let's pull off that armor piece and that gives you a much better look at the back of his torso and there's a very cool like saber tooth tiger and uh something there now i don't like the new hair uh zane hair piece that's included because it prevents him from ever getting a back of the head facial expression uh because you know it's exposed and everything the piece is cool i do like the cropped look i did prefer his original though and it's nice to get that piece here in silver because in this show they constantly take their hoods off and it's a good nod to that because you know he does need his hair piece i do like the titanium ninja i think it's a really good design i'm just 
not sold on the hairpiece. I don't know. It looks a little funky, but I love the armor and everything. And then the ninja suit itself is so cool. I really wish we could get all the other ninja in their updated legacy ghost attire. I didn't get any possession sets back in the day. And I really regret that because they're worth so much now. And they're all so good with great characters. So it's really nice to get this version of Zane here. All right, and now it's time to move on to the villains. The first character here is going to be Soul Archer, one of two ghosts included in the set. Now, I have a bit of a problem with the ghosts. Uh, both Gultar, the next ghost, Soul Archer, and the unnamed ghost in the $10 uh, battle pack all have the exact same face printing and torso printing and leg design. And that's the same treatment that the uh, Nindroids got. All the prints are the same, just the armor and accessories are different. And I'm not a huge fan of that because I loved the original designs from the actual, the original sets and everything, where all the characters had a bunch of individual prints and designs, and they, you know, had that in the show as well. I'm a little disappointed by that change, but ultimately it doesn't really bother me too much because they look different enough with all the other accessories. And I really just want to army build ghosts, and I don't really care if they look similar. Uh, Soul Archer here, I think, is incomplete, honestly. Uh, the Bone Arrow is a nice touch, but I would have loved one of those mini ghost builds from the original line because, you know, whenever he shoots an arrow, it's got that screaming ghost, and I think that would have been a really cool thing to include here. The head wrap is the exact same as Nain's mold, uh, Zane's mold wise, uh, just in dark blue and purple. There's a very cool translucent face underneath with a very scary printing, some tattered ninja robes, and on the back, we got a yin yang ghost symbol, and then some very nice legs, which I believe originated with the ghouls and the series 14 collectible minifigures i love the uh purple and green molding there character looks great i'm very happy with it soul archer is recognizable and pretty decent but it just feels a little basic to me and that might be because there are no unique prints or molds here and the final ghost character is going to be Gultar, and he looks so cool. I love that double-bladed scythe weapon. I think the translucent colors look so good. I'm not sure if that's a new piece or an older piece, but it looks really, really neat, and it's definitely my favorite weapon in the entirety of the set. This is what I was talking about. So much better than just a basic black bow and arrow. Pulling that away, though, we get a better look at the front torso print, which is identical to Soul Archer, as well as the yin-yang on the back. The character has a very nice purple rice hat. I'm very happy to get it in this color as well. Uh, the facial is exactly the same and there's a little mask piece uh, similar to what Cole wore in the rebooted line and the, and the Jafarmer piece as well covering up a, a tiny bit of printing and really just making this different than Soul Archer and I appreciate that although I think the Jafarmer would have been better served here in blue or purple I might try to add the purple armor or purple armor sorry the dark blue armor from the Taser Iron Man suit because I think that'd work a little more than black and I might change out the mask as well. I don't know. I don't think black was the right choice for those pieces. I think a uh, color that matched the ghost a bit more would have been better. This character is great, though. Definitely one of my favorites. He was so funny in the show, and I'm really happy to finally get Gultar in Lego form. All right, with those characters out of the way, it's time to take a look at this model. And this mech is amazing. I think it's a little oversized, considering in the show, this was about on the same scale as the Jay's mech from season four, Kai's mech from season, was that three? And then uh, Cole's mech from season, oh, sorry, Cole's mech from season three, uh, Kai's mech from season two. All four of them had their little mechs and everything about the same size. This one's very oversized. However, I don't mind. I think it represents a very good value for $60. And it's a very sturdy build and it's not going to fall over anytime soon like you can you can shake it around it's pretty sturdy on its feet it's a little back heavy sometimes but you can push it a pretty decent way actually before it uh, falls that's because those leg joints are really really sturdy we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up so uh, sorry about the getting cut off the frame but i want to pay really close attention to these feet they are very very sturdy with a ball uh, joint connection there and they have a ton of maneuverability forward and backward and they catch the mech quite well so you can lean them pretty far without them falling and everything and it's very very sturdy the back of the leg here has a really interesting part there are mixel ball joints holding it in place in addition to more ball joints here so it's double connected so it moves but it won't bend on its own it's super super sturdy so you can position this in any way you like however it's not going to bend or sink on its own there's a really cool sticker here and a sticker down here and then there are stickers on the inside flaps and legs as well and that's replicated exactly on the other side everything's the same the joints are connected to the actual hip with some of these 
I'm not sure what to call them, the older bionicle joints. Let's get that arm out of the way. And you can swing that forward and backward, although it does stick out a bit awkwardly in the back. The base here looks really good. I like the gold detailing on the white. It really kind of brings out a bit of the model. It makes it shine just a bit more. I also really like the armor padding here. It, without it, that would look terrible. And I like how it kind of covers up the ugly joint connection. I think that works really, really well for what it is. The mech does sometimes come out of alignment. Like I'm holding it in place here, but it, it's easy to... It's easy to mess up, and it's a little disappointing. It's hard to get positioned just right, but when you do, it looks so cool. I only wish we had something for this to face off, because the, in, the, in the original set, I believe it was a smaller version of this versus the four-armed ghost mech, which we don't have. I'll toss a picture of that on the screen right now. Moving on, though, to the arms... We, we got some really cool designs here. The arms are identical with these really cool shoulder pads up top that can open and close. And the arms are uh, altered only by the weapons. On this arm, we have a giant saw blade. And that's really cool. That can spin around. And on this one, we have the exact same wing piece from the Boulder Blaster set. Just on the other side, like, so you can do an uppercut with a sword. And the arms are very, very fluid. And they, they rotate quite nicely. And there are no stickers, uh, except for the two little pieces right here, one and two. And then the hands do twist around, and the fingers are kind of loose. I mean, I guess you can grab something, put a ghost in the hand if you really want, but it's not very... It's not really secure, and they're really just there for decoration, honestly. The hands aren't really that important. They're very good. The arms do bend forward and backward like that, and up and down. However, that's all the posability you're going to get from it. You can't really rotate that too much, so you're a bit limited. It's, it looks really robotic with the arms. I don't mind, though, because... For me, that's not really... You can get some really good poses with the posability you have, and I'm not too, too fussed about the arms and everything. Again, though, my biggest problem is these tend to bend really awkwardly and they look kind of bad. So you got to be careful about the way those pose. Before we move up to the top section of the vehicle, I want to look at the back real quick. There are two dangly portions in the back here, which you can clip Zane's weapons, his bow, his katana, and his hairpiece as well. I thought that was really inspired because it's not often you see stuff like that in LEGO sets. Although 2021 seems to have a ton of different spots in the Marvel mechs and this mech where you can clip accessories and everything. I think that's really cool because it prevents them from being lost. And I really hope that's something that stays consistent throughout the LEGO line. The gold design continues on the back here with some cool back armor. It's pretty basic, but I do appreciate it being tiled off instead of just left blank. It makes the mech look much more complete, especially from the back angle. Now, the front, Zane sits in the center console right here. This is a triangular piece that's locked in place. But looking down in there, you can pull Zane out pretty easily. He's attached with those two studs, and he's got two handlebars in there to grab onto. The head of the mech kind of just closes down here. This whole gap is open, but the head kind of comes on top. Three stickers, uh, one on each of these flaps, and then one on this slope piece right here and there's an old-fashioned atlantis harpoon is like an antenna on the back and again the mech kind of keeps sloping forward it, it doesn't move too much unless you're actively using it and then it does have a tendency to slope forward so that is a slight uh it's a slight problem i have to set but it doesn't really make or break anything at all there are also two uh flick missiles included uh push missiles included and those can be positioned up or down whichever you want and if you don't know how those work just push down and it launches pretty pretty well very aggressively the set does come with an extra however i've already lost that one uh accidentally launching it so you do have to be very very careful with those again see the set does kind of fall. You got to be really careful with how you display it because it is a very top heavy model. And with the way the legs are bent, it has a tendency to fall backwards unless you have weight on it. I keep bringing that up because it's something I'm noticing more and more the more I kind of try to position it. But overall, I love this build. I think it's an excellent improvement upon the original. The size is very humorous to me. However, I, I appreciate it. I think this is a set that definitely benefits from the oversized treatment that Lego sometimes gives its products because it's a giant robo mech and you can make some great uh, custom mechs or villains or something to oppose this. I think that's really cool. The many figures here are great as well. My biggest disappointment is that we didn't get Basha here. We just got Gunta, uh, Gultar and Soul Archer. I think for a $60 set, they could have at least given us five or six, I think six minifigures, honestly, because looking at the other sets of this wave, we have a $30 set with more minifigures than this $60 set. I'm, I'm talking specifically about the uh, Legacy um, Tournament of Elements set, which has so many minifigures. I think this set, they should have given us another ninja, and another ghost, and I would have been so much happier. I, I, It's way too much to ask for a Moro Lloyd figure, but I think if they included Gultar, Soul Archer, Basha, Zane, the Legacy J, which is amazing, and then one other character, probably uh, Ghost Cole, I think Ghost Cole, 
although he wasn't a ghost. Yeah, he wasn't a ghost in this. He was a ghost in this scene. Yeah, Ghost Cole would have been the best character to include here. I think would have improved this set tenfold. And I would have loved it so much more. As is, though, I think for $60, this represents great value. My only disappointment with the minifigures is that they are identically printed. The only difference is the armor and the accessories. Like what the heck also soul archer appears in the legacy battle pack um with the only variation is the bow and arrow accessory which is again disappointing but i don't really mind because i love army building the ghosts much like the ninjroids so the identical prince doesn't really bother me legacy j is my favorite of the legacy ninja i love that design although i do think it should have been skybound or something a little older i think getting a 2019 a 2020 figure in legacy is a bit early i would have preferred a much earlier figure i'm sure he was more important in some other seasons in the past i, I definitely think skybound but it's okay i understand why they did it because he was big in the video game season and it's a slightly newer golden figure the zay minifigure looks great i'm very happy with this set i definitely recommend picking it up if you guys have the funds it's not the best legacy set uh, i do think that the boulder blaster and the tournament of elements are better but i think this one is much better than the x1 ninja charger because i actually like this one much better than the original set that's everything i got for you guys today though make sure to comment down below let me know what you thought of this set what you think of the minifigures how they could have improved the selection what you think of my choices for a, a dream improvement could have been that's all for today though guys thank you so so much for watching i hope to see you all in the very next video and with y'all have a fantastic and safe rest of your day